men are celebrating as they enter Baghdad for the first time after decades in exile. They were handpicked by the US administration to help with the rebuilding of Iraq. Hassan Janabi is about to become a key member of Iraq's new regime. In order to come here, he's taken leave from his job as an engineer with the Sydney Catchment Authority. The original name of Baghdad is the city of peace. We can see the city of peace. The feeling that you are back home is, is beyond imagination, beyond description. I cannot describe it. Um, yeah, this is this is the first day, the first morning in Baghdad since 1979. The coalition forces are headquartered in Saddam Hussein's presidential palace. This is where Washington's vision of the new Iraq is being implemented, and also where the Iraqi exiles will be living and working for weeks to come. Hello, Lawrence. How are you? All right? Guess where I am now? <laughs> the presidential palace. <laughs> She doesn't believe me. Before anybody pray her, pray her killed by Saddam. Now I pray her. Hassan's mission here is to help run the Ministry of Irrigation and get water flowing throughout Iraq. The best shower I ever had. <laughs> you know, this is Tigris water. Is it? Yeah, this is the water from Tigris, you know. It's so sweet, yeah. so beautiful, you know. It's unbelievable. A Shiite from the holy city of Najaf, Hassan also has personal business to attend to after 25 years in exile. Yeah, I cried last night, um, but I uh, didn't get to finish, to finish it. I, I tried to get it out of my system. Still, um, probably I, uh, I'm saving something until I meet my family and go to Najaf and go to the uh, shrines of Najaf and, and go to the graves of my parents and my eldest brother. They were, I can... I just can't continue talking about these things. I'm feeling them inside. The American in charge of the Ministry of Irrigation is Eugene Starkiv from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Sorry? Eugene Starkiv. I'm with the... Uh... Eugene, is that right? That's right. Welcome. <laughs> He's Hassan's new boss. Every day I go, we work in the ministry, but you know, we're working in a place that has no windows, no doors, okay, no chairs, no dust. So but in, just, the, in the building itself? No, the it? building is burned out. So the difficulty was I had to fire all of these uh, bottles. You had to fire yeah. them? Excellent. And, well, yeah. it's excellent. On one hand, it's excellent, but on the other hand, it settles back. Okay. It's done. <laughs> It's done, and we're moving ahead. Excellent. Excellent. Hassan and Eugene have different reasons for being here. As a representative of the occupying power, Eugene is a pragmatist. As an exile, Hassan is an idealist, determined to make this union work. Yeah, it's a good meeting. It's a good meeting. Yeah, I didn't expect him to uh, um, 
but apparently he's he's having a very very tough job uh, but this is you know this is the job we are coming for uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, work closely with him uh, trying to advance the work of, of the Ministry of Irrigation <laughs> The palace appears sumptuous, but with the heat reaching 50 degrees each day and no air conditioning, it's far from comfortable. Are there any sheets? Can be given or something? Yeah, there's, there's sheets somewhere. What can I tell you? Yeah, this is the bed. Uh, probably I'm going to stay here for a couple of months. Um, yeah. <laughs> can't say anything. Just, <laughs> yeah, just think it away. The next day, Hassan is taken to see what remains of the Ministry of Irrigation. It is structurally unstable, even if we... Um, these are the storages for the Ministry of Transportation. All been. But look, this is the Ministry of Oil. It's protected. This floor has been completely burned. And these people telling me that this bank was started deliberately. Some people, some bad party members, tried to destroy the whole ministry. So they just let the fire and off they went. Each morning, Hassan is driven from the palace to the ministry in an armored convoy. Although he's uncomfortable with the military escort, he's grateful for the American presence in Iraq. I feel they are needed right now. Iraqis need to work really hard, Iraqi political parties, to develop the right model to rule Iraq. I mean, the Americans, they, they, are, they are saying they are not staying forever here. They, they want to go home as soon as possible, but they won't go before um, a viable government in Iraq could be um, instit instituted. Iraqis have to really to make the case that they are capable uh, of ruling themselves. While the ministry has 18,000 employees spread throughout Iraq, it's essentially being run by Eugene, Hassan, an Iraqi engineer, and two soldiers from the US Army Corps of Engineers. And it all happens in one room, in a small annex next to the ruined ministry. Nothing takes place without Eugene's approval. Today he's officially signing in a new minister and his deputy. This is the official paper. So this is, I guess this is my name in there. Yes, yeah. authorizing uh, Mr. Mohammed Shabri to be uh, the new interim minister, and I'm also signing the official letters releasing everyone else from their jobs, all of the Baptists. The coalition authorities have recently ordered the sacking of all Baathists in senior government positions. To his great frustration, Eugene has been forced to fire the people most capable of running the ministry. Here are some of these people, but 
decent people, and I hate to, I hate to put them out on the street. And, and they are technically very good. We, we need every good person who's used to managing other people. Yes. Eugene is applying for an exception for the previous deputy minister. Although a Bath Party member, Eugene wants him back to replace the man he's just appointed. You know what that means. You won't be the minister if he comes back. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. That's why, that's why we delayed this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not happy personally about re-employing high-ranking Bath members. But uh, the issue um, um, has been raised before my arrival here, and I wish uh, a negative decision uh, should be taken. Eugene has little sympathy for Hassan's ideals. He thinks that many of the exiles have unrealistic expectations. They live in their own kind of odd uh, dream world, uh, almost a kind of a virtual reality. And, and it, it's nice to talk about it in the coffee houses, you know, in Paris, about what you would do and how you, you would run the government. They, they just seem to feel that government runs on it by itself. And all we have to do is get rid of the bad guys. I, I don't believe that all these people have been just functionaries uh, to execute Saddam's orders. No, some of them have willingly participated and that decision-making process. Like many Iraqis, Hassan has good reason for hating the Ba'athists. At university, he was a student activist and refused to join the Ba'ath Party. He was imprisoned for 10 days and tortured for his principles. Days after being released, he fled the country. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was here. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure in which building because I was blindfolded um, two k's away from, from this place, I guess. Um, um, so... Yeah, I spent some time here. What, what, what did they do? Oh, uh, well, they, they don't treat you well. Um, it's horrible torture. Um, they need to extract information, even if there is nothing. But you need to confess for something because you are detained. If you don't have anything, then the answer is uh, continuous torture hanging from the roofs, uh, electric, electrocution, um, kicking, hitting, uh, abusing, um, so all, all kind of this stuff. Eugene has allowed Hassan two days off to visit his home in Najaf. He hasn't been home since 1979. You're going to see my family. What is left from my family? That's brothers and sisters. Um, I'm so glad to make this trip. I need to get this out of the way before I start the real work. I remember any of these faces. I don't remember this place. This is total. I can't, I can't believe it. Look at this. Open sewer. Oh, yeah, these are my brothers. Look 
كريم كريم وكر وكر تعبان تعبان روح This is part of the tradition for the newcomers they uh, sacrifice the uh, uh, lamb. It's very cruel, very cruel, but this is, this is the habit, this is the culture. So. <laughs> These are one of the best friends I, I left behind. Uh, look how they look. <laughs> they look horrible. <laughs> These are stories of uh, terrorizing my family and my brothers just because um, I was um, outside Iraq uh, on a weekly basis. And they either call him or him or my sister. Today, Hassan is taken to a Shiite cemetery outside Najaf, where his parents and eldest brother are buried. <laughs> they died only a few years ago, more than 20 years after Hassan left. <laughs> Olivia, this is my mother's tomb, and this is my eldest brother, and the other one is my father's. But the entire area is, is for the people that I know, I, people that I uh, grew up with. Um, Hassan is going back to Baghdad and taking his brothers and cousins to see Saddam's palace. None of these Shiite men could ever have imagined an opportunity like this. In his day, Saddam would have people killed just for taking photos of his palace. I'm, I'm not really, 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 I'm not really,
وضع انه انا اتمشى بالقصر صدام وهو بيدي مصاصه. اي ذاك كاسبر صارت العمه. The Ministry of Irrigation is responsible for restoring the country's vital water infrastructure, but the simplest tasks seem insurmountable. They're working in an office without electricity or even enough chairs, and all of the Ministry's paperwork was destroyed in the fire. It probably has been the most difficult job ever, no question. Um, I don't feel like, you know, uh, I, I think we're doing well here. Hassan's job is made especially difficult because the Iraqis see him as their only link to those in power. It is difficult to speak to every single individual because everybody wants to talk to me and I just don't have time to uh, and certain, certain issues is beyond, uh, beyond my control. So, uh, and these problems cannot be solved individually. I mean, the problem has to be solved for everybody. This man has throat cancer and wants to make sure his daughter will keep her job. By taking everyone's concerns on board, Hassan's having trouble getting his own work done. You can only cry, right? What else you can do? The most volatile issue at the moment is the payment of the 18,000 ministry staff. These employees are from the countryside and they haven't been paid for months. They've travelled to Baghdad to demand their wages from their new masters. Eugene doesn't think the Americans owe these people anything. A lot of it is back pay, but, you know, philosophically, why should we pay them? Back pay for what? They haven't been doing anything. It's their, gov it's their government that led them into this pro problem, not us. We, we, we're actually helping them get out of it, and they need to pull themselves by the bootstraps. But they have this socialist mentality where we get paid whether we do anything or not. It's left to Hassan to field the concerns of this angry mob. He's intent on convincing them that the Americans are acting in good faith. I'm going to have a
situation because we we were overwhelmed uh, but they you know uh, they did not beat us physically and uh, it appears that they got the message but you know they, they are angry they have families they have kids they don't have money uh, they have to feed their families uh. Hassan has been in Iraq for over two weeks and is desperate to get into the field and away from Baghdad and the ministry politics. Eugene has agreed to let him follow up his pet project, a plan to re-irrigate the marshes of southern Iraq, which were drained by Saddam Hussein. Uh, so I thought of, uh... Hassan is in the throes of organising a trip to the marshes for a group of American scientists. I want to cry. <laughs> he has no idea where to start, so Eugene offers his advice. I do it all the time. I could, I could, I could plan the trip for you in one evening. Okay, and that's it. That's, that's what the trip's going to be. Yeah. We don't have time. That's, that's part of the... We don't have time to kind of, you know, think about these things. Uh, it just has to be done. And it's your best judgment, your best guess, and frankly... No, I, of course. Frankly, they'll never know what the other alternative is. Uh, right? How do you know what the without the other is? Because uh, a couple of them have been working on it. It doesn't, on that stuff it doesn't matter what they work. They're yeah. going you know, to work on what we want, not what they want. Remember that. Yeah. They're working for us. Yeah. That's what's important. We define what's important, and we tell them this is what you have to focus on. And that's what has to be, that's what they have to understand. They work for us. Otherwise, we don't need them. They want to go on some kind of a zoological tour. There are plenty of other countries that can do it. Okay? Okay. That's, that's the reality. That's you right. tell them what you want. Right. 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 You do it. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And if they want to go on some side excursion, it's up to them. Yeah. Then I, I have no responsibility for it. This is what we want you to do. This is what's important. That's why we're here. Okay. Okay? That's right. Literally back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's good, but you know, this is this is just too harsh as well. Hassan's dream of re-irrigating the marshes is a massive task. The marshes were home to over 100,000 people who had lived undisturbed for thousands of years. 
The marshes used to cover 20,000 square kilometres. They're now less than 15% of their original size. In the mid-80s, Saddam Hussein drained the marshes in order to flush out Shiites opposing his regime. Tens of thousands of people were forced into exile. Hassan, and many in the West, see the restoration of the marshes as an important symbolic act. These are the Hamar marshes near Basra. Hassan is on a reconnaissance trip before the American officials arrive to inspect the area. This is one reed. <laughs> this is one. It used to be forest, you know, you don't see. It's walls of, of, of reeds. Ago, this was dry land. As soon as the old regime fell, the locals destroyed a dike connecting these banks, which had stopped the water flowing. This is the first time this family will have seen their home since they were forced to leave ten years ago. I'm <laughs> احنا هنا بهالارض هاي زبرنا وحشينا ورهامناها وسويناها ديرات كانت هور وماي